his children. Get by yourself. 
See, if you don't come apart, you're going to come apart. Yeah. All right, now. So, midst of everything that's going on around about us, we need an encouraging word. Jeremiah was thrown in prison in a, in a hole, if you will. And they teased him. They were upset at him because of a message that he brought, but he was bringing a good message. Mm -hmm. Wasn't a message that caused folk to jump and shout, but rather it was a message that called for repentance. Uh -huh. They threw him in prison and Wanted to know, had the audacity, Reverend Harris, to ask them, I'm sorry, Dr. Harris, to ask them, is there a word? Yeah. You know, folk are mess with you in yeah. times like this. They, yeah. they want to know where you are. They want to check your religion. And they want to know, in the midst of all of this, yeah. is there a word from God? I'm here to tell you this morning, there is. Yeah. There's a word. I, the purpose of this message is motivate us as believers with spiritual questions to trust God yes. in your tough times. Amen? That, that, Amen. You don't get anything else. That's the motive and <laughs> message behind this message is to motivate you with spiritual questions, those of us who question. And at the end of the day, you trust God in your tough times. Because you see, some of us as believers, we question God. And because we find it difficult to trust Him when things are looking bleak. Amen? Right, man. When you're fighting a disease, when you're fighting cancer, when you're dealing with situations that, amen, doctors are not sure of the outcome, Come on. you need to know where your faith is. You need to know this morning in whom. Trust. Yes, and where does your trust lie? Yes, yes. In your tough time. And so I want to give you just a few scriptures and, and I need you to write it down. I'm not going to quote them all, I'm not going to read them all, but I need you to write down just these scriptures because you're going to need them this week. Yeah, there you are. You're going to need them. And everything else is falling apart. You need to hold it together. John chapter 7, verses 37 and 38. Just write it down. John chapter 7, verses 37 and 38. On that last great day of the feast, Jesus stood and said aloud, in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, yeah. let him come to me and drink. For whoever believes in me, as the scriptures have said, streams of living water will flow from within. Nehemiah chapter 8, verses 1 through 10, I'm not reading it all, but it was a time in which was the first day of the new year, which was Rosh Hashanah, that the priest blew the ram's horn and they called, the ram's horn called the Sobar to celebrate, even though they were in the midst of a crisis. God told him, no, he said, it's time to celebrate. How many of you know the odd thing God asked you to do? Yeah. It seems like it's out of order, but be honest with you, it's in order. That's right. That's right. When is the time to celebrate when everything is going awry, when folk are losing situations and stocks are crashing? This is the time to celebrate. Why? Because God's going to show himself mighty. Yes! Thank you, Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 16 says, Do not test the Lord your God as you did at Massa. In Psalm 81, verse 7, in your distress you called and I rescued you. I answered you out of a thundercloud. I tested you at the waters of the river. Exodus chapter 16 and Exodus chapter 17, verses 1 through 7, but Luke chapter 4 through 12, uh, Luke chapter 4, verse 12 says, the devil urged Jesus to test his messiahship by casting himself. But Jesus replied, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. So the scriptures were already read in your hearing out of Deuteronomy chapter 17, verses 1 through 7. But I want to focus this morning, if you will, on verse 7. And he called the place Masa, meaning testing, and Meribah, which means quarrel, because he 
the Israelites quarreled and because they tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? They tested the Lord by saying, Is the Lord among us or not? So these few moments I'm going to talk to you from subject question Is the Lord among us or not? Either you is, or either you ain't. That's right. <laughs> Regardless of how one might personally feel about how quickly our 
government prepared to test millions of people for the virus. It has been said that our nation faces arguably the worst financial crisis since the Great Depression. Winston Churchill, the great prime minister of Britain, once said, a pessimist sees the difficulty in every opportunity, while an optimist sees the opportunity in every difficulty. In our scriptures this morning, we find the second of three accounts of murmuring caused by thirst. The main issue, if you will, here with the people of God is faith versus disobedience. Folk can have faith but still be disobedient. The people of God whose steps have been ordered by the Lord find themselves with the spirit of rebellion. The people challenge Moses to justify his leadership by providing water. In other words, the people of God were thirsty in the desert and they questioned his leadership, saying, if you are truly God's leader, then give us some water. All right. So they come to Moses and they demand that he justify his leadership by producing water. And that's that. I got to, I've got to prove to you that God called me. Come on. Come on. Just by producing some water. Some water. That's right. Really what they were saying is, you ought to be able to do whatever we need done because you are God's leader. You so-called are God's leader. All right. All right. They were questioning his authority. And so, Moses appealed to God to help him in this emergency crisis, and God showed him how to produce miraculous water out of the rock. How many of you know God does not leave you hanging? That's right. Amen. Amen. Uh, amen. When folk will push you, amen, to the wall and make you feel like quitting, don't you know? That's when God said, I got this. Come on, come on. Come on. The fact of the matter is, is although from Moses' perspective, the people are illustrating a lack of faith and a stubbornness to believe God's word, it was not Moses who had the problem, it was the people. That's right, man. What will always blame you instead of looking at themselves? Amen. Sometimes as believers, we do have a stubborn heart. Sometimes as believers, our faith is not as strong as it should be or as we would like for it to be. That's all we need to do is just simply admit where we are in God. Amen. Don't blame it on somebody else. Blame it on your own self. Right. <laughs> Nevertheless, God does not promise to give us what we want, but he does promise to satisfy us abundantly, those who trust in him. So the key of this message is this morning is there's got to be some trust. Yeah. Yes. That's what God was saying. God, it's not that it's my fault that you're in the jam that you're in. It's whether you trust me to get you out of what you're in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> People were thirsty. And because of their thirst, they began to question authority. How many of you know you can have thirst for the wrong thing? Amen. Right. Amen. And because you got thirst for the wrong things, you began to question God. Yes. They questioned his motives and his moves. They questioned should they have listened to his leadership, talk about Moses. They, they questioned God, either you is or you ain't, is the Lord among us, they said. And saints of God, I'm going to tell you something this morning, that when you get at a point where things get rough and tough, you'll find the devil putting in your head, is God with you? Oh, right. And those are the ones on your job to say, I thought you believed in God, but you're sitting there shaking and shivering about what's 
going on. Can I tell you something? This is our finest moment, saints. Yes, yes. This is the church of God's finest moment. Don't you know that they're looking at us? They're looking to find out whether we have what we say we have, whether we believe in what we say we believe in. Yes. This is our right as our parents to show our children, amen, where we are in Christ and not to back down and to allow anybody, amen, to dictate what we believe and who we should believe in. Amen. amen. They're looking at you. That's right. This morning I'm here to tell you that while the world's eyes are on you, amen, God has also got his eyes on us. Yes, because he's left his church on the earth in order to declare who he is. Yes. This is our finest hour. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes. This is a time when you ought to, amen, be able to shine for God. This is a time when you ought to be able, amen, to let folk know what you're made up of, whether it is of faith or faith. Yes. So it was Thomas Paine. And made famous the words, these are the times that try men's souls. This was a famous quote by uh, this Brit, but his purpose was, amen, to wrap the people in comfort of time, and which was something that panic and confusion had robbed them of. This was the time when they needed to be encouraged, when their hope was hopeless, when they were down to the point of which in corner. Y'all ever been there? Yeah. Yeah. They needed somebody to encourage them. Yeah. Yeah. I was listening on the news of past text coach, basketball coach, yeah. who had shared after all of the season, the rest of the season had been canceled after all athletics had been canceled. Yes. His team there at Cast Tech was upset and rightfully so because they were on the rebound. They were about to make some good strides. They had been doing some great things and they even believed they had a chance at the championship. Come on. Mm -hmm. So while they're in the locker room, seeing the heads bowed low and the young men losing their strength and their hope. He said in the midst of that crowd, mm -hmm. if this is the worst that life can throw at you, then the rest of life is up to you. Saints of God, that's what God is telling you. He said, this is the best that the devil can throw at us. Then life ought to be good from here on. Amen. 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 Instead of us getting all bent out of shape, we need to learn as to what the scriptures of God tell us in the midst of these trying and tough times in which we're living. First Peter 5 and 7 says, Cast all of your care, all of your anxiety, all of your fears, cast them all on Him. For he cares for us. Yes, he Instead of getting all upset, throw it where God told us to throw it. Hello? Yeah. 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 Amen. You don't have to hold on to it. Just give it to God. That's, right. That's what God was saying. In these rough and tough times, this is not the time to ask us, is God among us or not? We need to ask ourselves if we're on the Lord's side. All right. Reminded of a story to close this message. Very simple story. That was told of a farmer who owned an old mule. This mule fell into the farmer's dry well one day, and the farmer heard the mule braying or whatever mules do when they fall in the driveway. After careful 
addressing the situation, the farmer sympathized with the mule man. He decided that neither the mule or the dry well was worth the trouble of saving. So instead, he called his neighbors together and told them what had happened and enlisted them to help haul some dirt to bury the old mule in the well and to put him out of his misery. Initially, at the dirt landed on the mule, the old mule was in a panic of hunger. But as the farmer and his neighbors continued shoveling and the dirt continued to hit the back of the mule, a thought suddenly came to the mule. <laughs> it dawned on him that every time a shovel roll of dirt landed on his back, if he could just simply shake it off yes. and step up. Come on now. This he did every shovel full, every shovel continued, he would shake it off and step up. Shake it off and step up. Shake it off and step up. Come on here. He repeated this to encourage himself. I'm talking about a mule. No matter how painful the dirt was when he it hit his back or distressing situation seen, the old mule fought the panic okay. by simply shaking it off yeah. and stepping out. Saints of God, I came by this morning. As you might imagine, it wasn't long before the old mule uh, battered and exhausted. He stepped triumphantly over the wall of the well. The situation that seemed at first like it would bury him became a blessing to him. Yes. All because of the manner in which he handled his adversity. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, this is how life is. If we face our problems yes. and respond to them positively yes. and refuse to give in to the pain, right. the pain, and the bitterness, the adversities that come along to bury us usually have within themselves the potential, amen, to benefit and to bless. Okay. If the dirt had fallen on the mule, right. we would not have been able to climb out. If it had not handled each shovel of dirt with the thoughts of overcoming it, he would not have been able to climb out. We need our adversities. We need some tough times in our lives. We need our obstacles. How we handle them and what we become, amen, because of the way we handle them, it's very important. I said, saints of God, this is our finest hour. Whatever you're going through this morning, can I encourage you to just shake it off and keep stepping. Shake it off and keep stepping. Whatever my time, God has taught me to say, it is well.
Sunday school and they said I'm not going to church because the government is saying <laughs> Some had been coming to church anyway. Amen. No. But now we just got a bad excuse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have 200 folks set up in here. Now that's what she said. Didn't it? She said 250 or more that we would refrain from gathering. That's why I'm glad this morning. Zion didn't tell us to close the door. That's right. Amen. I'm glad that they said just leave it up to the people. Because I found out if you're hungry enough, you'll go through hell and high water and get some to eat. Amen. If you're hungry. I ain't never seen nobody that said, no, I, I'm not going because they said the coronavirus is out. But did y'all see how many folks was in line at the grocery store? Did you see how many folks were packed in there together? There were more than 250 people. Preach. Yes, yes. They got to do what they need to do. And I came back just to tell the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.